In part one, I did the cutting and assembly for the carcass of the record shelving unit that I'm making for my brother. And in this part, I need to build the leg frame, add a back panel, apply finish, and deliver it to my brother's house. First I found some wood that looked to be a good match for the veneer on the chipboard panels that I could use to trim the chipboard edges. I used my thickness planer to plane it down to 15mm in thickness, which is the same thickness as the panels. And then I set up a sacrificial fence at the front of the table saw using a scrap piece of pine and some hot glue. Doing this enabled me to move the table saw fence in between cuts and cut some consistently sized thin strips of the wood in a much safer way than cutting thin strips against the actual table saw fence. I added wood glue and used some pin nails to secure the trim and hide the chipboard edges. And then I cut the trim pieces to length. I could then sand the trim pieces flush and ease over the sharp edges using my random orbit sander and I sanded the rest of the unit while I was at it too. Next I wanted to create a recess at the back of the unit for a back panel to sit in. I used a rebate bit in my router to cut a channel around the back edges of the panels. and I finished off those cuts to the central dividers with my multi-tool and a chisel to square up any round corners. I'd use some 3mm plywood for the back panel. The piece I had was salvaged and a bit of a random shape, so I first needed to mark up a square and straight edge using my framing square. I then cut that with a circular saw before measuring and marking up the panel to the size I needed and making the rest of the cuts. When I first offered up the panel it was slightly too big in one corner, so I made some refinements with my block plane and then it fitted quite nicely. The back panel would be painted green to match the colour of the wallpaper in my brother's living room. As usual, I like to make use of what I have already rather than buying things, and I had some paint in a green colour called Sea Moss. It had quite a bluish colour tone, so I added some magnolia, which I also had in my shed, and that gave it a warmer and lighter colour. I applied the paint with a mini roller. I sent a photo to my brother and he asked if it could be less vivid and have more of an olive green tone. So I then mixed in some brown paint that I also had already. It would have been much better to mix this while the paint was in the glass jar rather than the mixing tray, but I just mixed it up as best I could in the tray and it turned out fine. In order to choose a finish for the unit, I first did some tests on an offcut. I tested some shellac sanding sealer, boiled linseed oil, rustic pine bry wax, and clear bry wax. The rustic pine bry wax looked most like the colour I would associate with mid-century modern furniture, as it had a brown, almost teakish colour. So that's what I decided to use, but before applying the wax, I first applied some spray varnish to the unit to give it an extra layer of protection. This would also bring out the grain nicely before I apply the wax. After applying the first coat I sprayed on a bit of water and then wet sanded at 400 grit just to denib the finish and keep things smooth and then I applied a second coat of spray varnish. Then I could apply the bry wax which would add a brown colour tone, another layer of protection and also a nice subtle sheen once it's buffed. I left the wax to set overnight and then used a buffing pad in my drill to buff out the wax finish and it looked and felt really nice at that point. 
Before adding the back panel, I first made some reference marks where the section dividers were. I connected those marks with a line using a straight edge and I could then use those lines as a reference for where to fire in the brad nails. With the nails added, I was quite nervous to turn over the unit to check and see if there were any blowouts from the nails, as that could have completely ruined the project, especially because the veneer on the chipboard would have torn out and it would have made for a really difficult repair, but fortunately there weren't any, which was a relief. Because the plywood back was so thin at 3mm, I was also a bit worried that the nails would fire right through the plywood, even with the nailer set to fire them in gently and it seemed to be fixed okay, but just for an extra bit of peace of mind, I also added some hot glue around the perimeter to help hold it in place. Next I could find some wood to make the legs, and again I checked it would match the veneered board okay. I added some water too to see what it would look like with finish on, and it seemed like a pretty good match. I cut the pieces to length at the mitre saw and these were cut at 16cm as that's the height the unit would need to sit off the floor in order that the unit would sit above some electrical sockets on the wall where the unit will be placed. I wanted the legs to be tapered on two sides, so I used my combination square and a ruler to mark up the tapers. And I used the bandsaw to cut the shapes and a hand plane to clean up the bandsaw cuts. I also rounded over the sharp edges of the legs using my block plane. For the apron rails between the legs I could use some offcuts of the veneered board. I positioned them where I wanted them to meet the legs and used my marking knife to mark up where I could cut a housing joint. I decided to cut all the joinery by hand. Usually I'd drill out the excess material with a force and a bit first and then chisel it away, but I was in the mood for doing some chiseling so that's what I did. I did a quick dry assembly and the joints fitted okay. So I marked up the opposite side and cut the joints in the same way. Then I applied glue and used a couple of bar clamps to pull the joints tight. I wiped away any excess glue with a damp cloth. So that was one short side of the leg assembly complete, and I did the second short side in exactly the same way. Then I cut some more chipboard for the apron rails for the long sides at the table saw. I positioned the legs the right distance apart for the size I needed the leg assembly to be, and then offered up the rails, marked them for length, and cut them at the mitre saw. And I wouldn't need to cut any joinery for these rails as I could just use glue and screw them to the inside of the legs. That would be plenty strong enough and also it means the apron rails would be less visible on the front of the unit as they'd be further back. <laughs> 
I sanded the bottom of each leg by hand. This should help to prevent tear out of the grain when the unit gets moved around. To attach the leg frame to the unit, I cut some cleats out of some scraps of veneered block board. I glued and nailed the cleats in place temporarily before reinforcing them with screws. And then I drilled some holes through the top of the cleats for the screws to be added later on. I gave the leg frame a sanding and then wiped on some boiled linseed oil for finish. This was a different finish than I used for the main part of the unit but that won't really matter. I added glue to the top of the cleats and apron rails, flipped the unit upside down and then I could position the leg frame where I wanted it and add screws. Finally, I added one of my stickers to the bottom. And then I could deliver it to my brother. Here's a time lapse we took of putting the records in. I can't vouch for his taste in music. I'm really pleased with how this project turned out and I think my brother is too. It's not a project that I particularly enjoyed making though, mainly because working with chipboard can be quite frustrating. It's pretty unforgiving stuff really because if you manage to chip the veneer then the workpiece is pretty much ruined unless you can find a way to repair it or patch it up and that happened a few times throughout this build. I definitely would have preferred to use a plywood or a veneered block board or something like that because you just don't have to be as careful with it. But the veneered chipboard is what I had and I'd much rather put it to a good use rather than letting it go to waste. And as veneered chipboard panels go, this stuff was actually pretty decent quality. If I were to make the project again, I would cut a housing joint in the side panels to accommodate the central shelf. I think I mentioned that in the first video. This project took around 22 hours in total to complete and all of the materials were either given to me or salvaged so the costs were minimal. I hope you enjoyed this project please subscribe if you haven't already and thank you for watching.